Hey, what's going on everybody? Boylon here and today we're going to be talking about my baby account. Uh, because I haven't done an update for a little while and I thought that it would be worth it to talk about some of the more recent events, especially with Deathlock, uh, the techno whatever, uh, just ending and now with the Abomination event live and also the uh, Stark R&D event and all of that. Also, we have Morgan Le Fay Pestilence. So there's a lot of exciting things to talk about with my baby account because honestly, with Pestilence, with Morgan Le Fay, I think I'm going to unlock her after this pass and I'm honestly shocked that after not even three months yet, that I'm going to have Morgan Le Fay. So let's talk about that. So if you're ready to go, let's boil this down. Okay, so first off, we're, we're going to start here in the roster page. Just as a recap, if you guys, if it's been a while since you guys have watched one of my baby account videos, I basically cleared all of the campaigns. So that includes Mystic, uh, 3-9, uh, all the way to Cosmic, uh, Nexus, Heroes and Villains. So there's basically not much I can do for campaigns until level 70, which unlocks a Hero 7-1, a Villain 7-1, and then Nexus 8 as we go into that, uh, which then eventually leads into Doom War, of course. So, um, yeah, all that's done. There's not much I can do until we get there. I don't know when the next video update will be necessarily, but we'll talk about it when we get there. So, um, this is my roster so far. I want to talk about what I got for my uh, Val uh, sorry, Valkyrie. I think I already I already updated since then, uh, but I did get a four star Valkyrie. But I did pull it an eighty shard orb from his her six seventy five orb. Now, as far as Viv Vision, this one this was entirely through the campaigns. This was I, I basically maxed out hard mode and easy. And then I got this. Um, I, I got 69 out of 80, and that might have been some pretty good orb luck, but I was just shy of getting 4-star. Now, the problem was, I capped out on fragments very, very early on. Not to mention that the Viv Vision campaign was actually fairly challenging, so I wasn't able to 3-star the final node. So, I, I basically maxed out uh, all of the... Uh, the fragments on the nodes for all of hard mode except for the last node, and all of easy. I was literally cleaned out after a couple of, um, with maybe like four or five days left, you know, I had like nothing to do and it was sad. So that's basically what happens if you don't have any nodes to farm, if you don't have heroic unlocked and heroic for event campaigns don't actually start until level 68, you can do the first node and then it, you might not be able to do the next ones depending on, you know, your, the power level of your traded characters. But nonetheless, I still got Viv Vision unlocked. I almost got her to four star. So when she does go into the orbs, hopefully I will pull a premium and, and get her to four star that way. Cause I do have four red. I also want to talk about how I unlocked Deathlock because I did manage to actually get him just barely unlocked, 0 out of 80, 100 shards by the end of the Techno Future milestone. So I was quite happy about that because missing a character really, really sucks. Now, unfortunately, I did not unlock Hulkbuster. Now, I don't know where he is. He's probably somewhere in here. 78 out of 100. That's what I got for Hulkbuster. Didn't quite get him unlocked. So that's a little bit sad, but, you know, what can you do, right? It was a very... Hardcore blitzing event. We all know it. You know, I was blitzing on my main account at least six plus rotations to get extra shards for Hulkbuster. It was very challenging. Maybe if I did eight rotations on my on my baby account, maybe I might have pulled through if I had some better luck. I got a lot of twos and fours. I didn't get any bigger drops than that, really. So it is what it is, and I struggled a little bit for that. Uh, but I did get the uh, I did get the event item, and that was what actually got me unlocked for Deathlock. So for better or for worse, you know, I, I still managed to do well in that event, just not enough to get Hulkbuster unlocked, unfortunately. I'm 22 shards shy, and hopefully, once again, he, when he goes into the orbs, that I will be able to get him unlocked as well. As far as what I'm doing with my wider roster, though, I'm kind of, I'm gearing up characters that I believe are going to be important to my roster later on, but not necessarily right now. So if you look at my hearted characters, like I have some Kree minions, which I'm going to be using to unlock... Uh, Nick Fury, I have Hulk just kind of randomly there because I think I might want to upgrade him at some stage. The Web Warriors, you can see all of them basically listed here. Iron Man, Sharon Carter, Cap Sam, Maria Hill, Deathlock as part of Bionic Avengers. Cloak standalone, and then the Young Avengers. Kate, you see Kate Bishop, uh, Miss Marvel, America Chavez, uh, Killmonger for Flash events, more Web Warriors, Vision, and the top row here, really. Uh, Squirrel Girl for Young Avengers. I recently unlocked Kestrel. And actually got some pretty good orb luck because I'm already at 46 out of 55, so that's great there too. Uh, so I'm kind of doing a lot 
of everything. And I'm kind of just going all over the place right now. These are characters that I'm almost certain that I will need for events later on, and that's why I'm kind of just slowly bringing them up. I'm bringing them up in gold also because you can actually spend gold in this, uh, in the Hulk, uh, blah, blah, Stark R&D event because for baby accounts or for, for new players, you know, it kind of encourages you to spend gold. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit here too as well. You know, I have 40 million gold and so I can actually like use it without being punished for it necessarily. So I have been putting into the Stark R&D because I have a limited Blitz roster that I'm not going to get as much points through Blitzing. So I thought maybe to get the 8 million, because I think that's at least important to get to 8 uh, for the Empiric Serum for the event, that I can at least get to 8 million. And so that's going to be a combination of Blitzing and spending gold. And, you know, I'm just kind of just going balls to the wall with my gold spending right now a little bit because I, I'm going to try and spread it out over a couple of days at least. Uh, but that's what I'm doing because I need to get that gold spent. And this is actually the best time to do it for early accounts. I don't I don't really recommend doing that much gold spending uh, on my main account. For example, I'm I'm saving my gold for like characters like Red Hulk, uh, who I'm gonna want to put some gold into. I, I'm I'm you know basically doing blitzing on my main account instead of spending the gold, which I think is probably. Uh, the better thing to do and so that is going actually fairly well I don't know if I'm gonna get 8 million every single time or not but yeah once I get to about 8 million I'm probably gonna stop because blitzing is a lot of work let me tell you that so uh, but where else am I at and what do we want to talk about I want to talk about also the pestilence event so this just went live recently and I did difficulty 2 I got 201k now, how did I do that I have 159 scourges the Scourge points that I have right now, these are the ones that I did at difficulty 2. Now, it's suggested gear 9 plus for this, and I do want to make clear um, that you do need some traits to run through this. Not too many, and it's every second node. So on node 2, you need heroes, which is pretty easy. Uh, node 4 is global. Node, uh, uh, no, no, node 7? So node 7 is villain. Node 9 is cosmic, and then node 10 is city. So there's only a couple of them, maybe like five out of the entire thing that requires characters. You don't need your web warriors. However, I did use my web warriors here in node number 10 with Shang-Chi and Cloak anyways. And so that's part of the reason why you saw on my roster that I was building up uh, a wider set of characters for this. And so this allowed me to get to the milestone of 200,000, which is not very far, of course. You need 100,000 to rank for Morgan Le Fay. I want to make that very clear right now. Because if you do that, if you score 100k, which is basically a clean D1 run, you're going to get 40 shards from Morgan Le Fay, at least. And so what I managed to do is I managed to get just over 200,000. So that got me this milestone 1, 2, 3, which gives me 5 shards. And milestone 5, which gives me 10 shards. And so this puts me at 55 out of 100. Okay? So at a bare minimum, I'm going to get a payout of 40. I may actually get a payout of 50. So if I get a payout of 50, I will unlock Morgan Le Fay before three months of my baby account, which is absolutely astonishing. Now, if I get the 40, I'm not quite at the 80% threshold. Uh, what I will do is I will save some cores and I will buy those stupid pestilence orbs because you get a bare minimum of two Morgan Le Fay shards. So <laughs> I would need to get three at a bare minimum of uh, these orbs in order to unlock her if I only get 40 shards. I may try, like just before this event ends, to get to that next milestone that gives shards, which is 275k. In order for this to happen though, I would need to run difficulty three. And I may be able to do this. <clears throat> However, there are certain sections that were a little bit harder for me than others, including uh, the villains actually was a little bit challenging because a lot of my meta characters that I have right now are not villains. They're not very high. There's only 10 characters and they're about 20k power and also the city a little bit because I find I'm still having to level up my, my Ghost Spider a little bit here. Uh, I'm basically using Shang-Chi, Cloak, Ghost Spider, um, Scarlet Spider, and Squirrel Girl, I think, as my five characters for that. And so I do need to like kind of raise them across the board a little bit. This is where I struggled the most was in the city section just now because because they're not super meta as far as my arena team goes and then for villains because this is probably the hardest because there's just not a lot that I have unlocked. So if you want to look at my roster as far as you know scourges go I can start with villains because that is the most challenging and I, I just really don't have a lot to work with. Some people have better orb luck than others and I just don't really have much. So I have Killmonger here at the top. He's probably my top villain and then I've been using Ravagers believe it or not. Ravager Boomer Ravager Stitcher, Ravager Bruiser, and Electro. You can see with my unlocks, I, I just don't really have very many good characters. 
Um, I haven't gotten anyone like super meta. I don't think Hell is probably worth it at this time. A lot of them are low stars as well. Haven't really built up Mordo. Standalone, I don't know how much value there is. Lady Deathstrike is close at 93 out of 100. Uh, I'm actually four shards from Strange Heartless. That would have been actually kind of nice if I had him available, but I don't because of Orb Luck. Uh, and I, I, I don't know how many of these other characters that I would use. Now, in the future, <clears throat> when she comes back around, I might be able to use Morgan Le Fay to unlock herself, which would be absolutely stellar. And I will do that. Uh, but and that, that, actually, that alone probably would make it significantly easier as well to do lower difficulties, at least like difficulty 2 and 3. Uh, other Darkhold members, Agatha, I'm really far off. That's not going to happen anytime soon, really. It'd be like the equivalent of getting the Eternals unlocked. I, I There's just not a lot of other good options. If I can maybe get Abomination unlocked for like, I don't know, the Morgan Le Fay 4th pass, <laughs> that might help. But that's really the only other character on the villains list that might be worth building for this because there's just not a lot for new players and it's quite a bit of a challenge, I think, in my opinion. Now, by going through the lanes itself, I'll just show you guys really quick for those of you who are doing uh, Morgan Le Fay at a lower tier right now as well. Uh, my city, we'll start here, city, and then we'll go to global and cosmic. Uh, this is my city team here, so you can see Shang-Chi, Squirrel Girl, Ghost Spider, uh, Cloak, and actually, sorry, I think I used Miss Marvel, not Scarlet Spider, because Miss Marvel was a lot higher built up. So these five alone were enough to get me through that node, that final node 10, and then of course we have Global. That one was a little bit tougher, I must admit, because I do have Secret Avengers, but they're not built super high. So I did actually go with uh, Bionic Avengers. <laughs> I went with Viv, Vision, Deathlock, uh, Maria Hill, and Capsam. I'm pretty sure, and I was able to do that probably because Bionic Avengers do really, really well. And so I think that's where a lot of the damage came from, and that's how I able to get through that. Uh, as far as Cosmic goes, uh, I do have Silver Surfer, so that did help me quite a bit there as well, and I do have the Asgardians, of course, and Kestrel. So this one was probably the easiest. So I had Kestrel, Silver Surfer, uh, Valkyrie, Mighty Thor, and Thor, and that got me through the whole thing. So I didn't need to use my Ravagers because they're Cosmic. I saved them for the villain section, and uh, that was it. The Heroes was pretty easy, too. I just kind of used a mishmash. Of some of my best characters and uh, that was the lower end difficulties of Morgan Le Fay now I'm hoping that when famine comes back on the second pass what's very likely is I'm probably gonna you know I might be able to unlock all of the horsemen by by two runs you know getting that minimum 40 drop and also getting some of the milestone shards which I think is super super great and I, I can't understate how great that is because the horsemen at least for pestilence pestilence is second and third run there was one month in between. So if they keep being one month after the second pass, that's going to be really, really great. Because I think that the Famine Rogue event is going to be running within the next month, actually. You know, maybe sometime after Red Hulk or very close behind that. And if that's the case, maybe we'll see Famine number three a month after Famine number two. And if that's the case, then it shouldn't take me very long to unlock Rogue either. Which, if you guys watched one of my previous videos where I talked about ignoring legendaries... That's exactly why. Because if I'm able to get Horseman characters, if I can get Morgan Le Fay on my baby account after not even three months, I, and to prove it to you, I just want to show you that I do have my, my, my login times here as well. Uh, it's, uh, here we go, 74. We're on day 74 as of recording this out of 90 days. Absolutely astonishing. Like, it's really amazing, like, how far I've been able to get with this count in just a short period of time. Uh, you know, orb luck aside with random drops, but uh, for blitzing for this up this event right now uh, for Stark R&D, it is a bit challenging because I only have so many teams. I know my, my, my square, because I don't have my green screen up, is blocking the way. Uh, but I basically only have 14 regular teams that I cycle through. And so what I normally do is after I've done those 14 teams, I'll go into my blitz window and I will do this. So the filter for not on cooldown. And I'll look for some of these characters because they're not saved. <laughs> and I will... I, I, sometimes I will auto sim it. Sometimes I will just go into the battle and tear down. And I think that's really important to do for baby accounts and for newer players. I think is to make sure that you're doing your blitzing at low tiers because it's going to be able to maximize your win ratio as well. And because you'll basically just want to go up to like tier 5, tier 6 maybe, and then drop down and do it all over again. And if you do it this way, you can actually maximize your blitz wins pretty well by using just random shitty characters. You can just like put some characters together and you're probably going to win. And especially once you unlock Sims, which is at level 60, that's going to help significantly as well. I honestly... I feel bad for anyone that's doing these events on manual because it absolutely is horrific. So, since these ones that encourage you to win more, I have had Blitz Simming activated. That's great. I honestly don't think I would even engage in these types of events 
without blitzing because it would just take so long for you to be able to do that. So in case you just didn't know what I was doing with, with blitzing on my account, with my baby account, and this is what I'm doing. I do like a rotation of like, I don't know, 15 to 20, 20 teams. And then I just drop down again and do it all over again. So unfortunately I don't have like all the, all the characters available to me, but you know, I can do what I can for this event and hopefully I can get 8 million uh, score every day. I think that's about it. You know, my arena's not really changed a whole lot. Um, I'm in the top 500, but because of the characters that I have unlocked, uh, you know, I, I don't have Eternals. I don't have anything mega. Uh, maybe when it, Morgan Le Fay, you know, speaking of Morgan Le Fay, holy shit, this guy here, um, you know, that might be me in five days, hopefully. Uh, and then I can do a combination of like Morgan Le Fay standalone, I guess. But he also has Cersei and I don't have Cersei or Icarus. So there's just not much I can do. You know, I have to just kind of, you know, cycle through and find teams that I think I can beat. But I typically just stay in the top 500. It's not a ton of cores, but it's really, it's just the best that I can do uh, right now. So yeah, I think that basically covers what I want to do. Oh yeah, Cosmic Crucible really quickly. Uh, so I've been doing fairly well. And actually, whenever I win a match, I get about 50 trophies. I don't know if it shows what I'm currently at. I have 428 trophies right now. Uh, I'm at rank 37,232. So I am in silver, believe it or not. I am actually in silver Crucible League after a week. So I went from bronze. This only took one week for me to get from bronze to silver. Don't know how long it's going to take me to gold. I still just leave base um, hand teams on the defense and then I use uh, just all of my characters that I have available to win on the offense and that's just what I do there. So I think now that covers everything. There's nothing else more to do. Screw RTA. I did unlock that recently but like I don't I barely engage with that. Maybe I should because it has shards in there but uh, yeah I just do it from blitzing and get my score that way. Okay I think that's everything. Let me know if I missed anything that you wanted to see in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get that on the next update. Otherwise also just to remind you guys I do have a baby channel progress or sorry yeah baby account progress channel on my discord so if you want to keep up with what i'm doing there i do post like screenshots and things that i'm doing more frequently there as well so that you guys can keep up with that before i do a video things like that as well so that's the end of this video and of course until next time uh stay safe and healthy and i'll see you all later oil on signing out can't wait for morgan lefay